Hello. Welcome to another lesson that we will talk about dito sa Introduction to Psychology. Our topic for today is very popular among psych majors because we will talk about mental health. There is one skill I want to teach you today which is very important and that is how to make the mind healthy. Of all the people in this world, I believe it must be the psych majors and the psychology professionals who should be the masters of this question. Nakakahiya naman if you call yourself a psych major yet you don't have any idea how to deal with mental health. So I don't like it to be like that. So we are going to talk about this lesson. Basically, we start with the truth that the psyche can get sick. Hindi lang yung katawan natin yung nagkakasakit. We need to acknowledge the fact that even our minds at times can get sick. Like for example, one uh, mental illness that is a an expression of, of our mental wellness not being well is depression. Diba? Ano ba yung experience ng isang taong may depression? According to one psychologist, depression is a crucial disease that can affect anyone. It is very easy once the symptoms begin for a person to slide down the black hole of depression where the symptoms spiral and feed off of each other increasing in severity and you know that is very true i have known many people who used to be very successful very financially stable they have healthy relationships until their mental wellness goes wrong they experience something nagkaroon sila ng sakit mentally so ano nangyari their life spiraled down they were no longer competent they lost their most important relationships all because of poor mental wellness now one thing about mental wellness is kapag na negatively affect yung mental wellness it does not automatically translate to mental illness in fact take a look at this diagram poor mental wellness if it becomes too much if it becomes severe can lead to mental illness but not immediately meaning there are still certain things we can do in this situation so that this one will not become this one okay so yun yung good news na gusto kong i-share sa inyo in connection to our mental wellness although our mental wellness can get into trouble we can we can also get sick mentally or psychologically the good news is mental health can be protected there are certain behaviors that we can do to prevent our mental wellness from being eaten up by mental illness. So, nandito pa lang tayo, okay, once we feel that our mental wellness is declining, we can already do a number of things that can protect us to, from, from, from here to develop into a mental illness. So, kapag meron tayong magandang mental wellness, we are able to make our mental wellness healthy. The link between poor mental wellness and mental illness, as you can see on the screen, nawawala. Okay? So, hindi siya tumutuloy sa mental illness. And that is what I want to discuss with you in this lesson. What are the different psychological techniques that we can do so that our mental wellness will remain healthy so we decrease the chance of our mental wellness turning into mental illness okay so that is a very this will be a very exciting topic Now, before we talk about the different techniques on how to improve our mental wellness, first we need to master the idea or the concept of mental wellness or mental health or psychological well-being or subjective well-being. All of those concepts are just the same. They are pertaining to one single thing. Pare-pareho lang yun, no? So in this lecture, I am going to interchange those terms. But really, what is the essence of mental health or mental wellness? If you go to APA, the American Psychological Association, and you look at their dictionary, 
and find the definition of mental wellness, it's about having a positive state of mind. And what do you mean when you say you have a positive state of mind? Let's read. A state of mind characterized by emotional well-being, good behavioral adjustment, relative freedom from anxiety and disabling symptoms, and a capacity to establish constructive relationships and cope with the ordinary demands and stresses of life. Siyempre, masyado itong mahabang i-memorize. You don't like to memorize all these details. So, we can just reduce this into this statement. If you say that you are in a positive state of mind, it means you are in good mental condition. So, when you hear someone saying, you know what, my greatest blessing in life is I have a very good mental wellness or my mental health is very good, it means that person is in a good mental condition. And the reverse is true. Kapag may narinig ka na, alam mo bro, pag-pray mo ako kasi yung mental wellness ko hindi okay, then that means that person is not in a good mental condition. But I want to add more details into the meaning of good mental condition. Paano mo ba malalaman na ang isang tao ay nasa good mental condition nga? Or, paraphrase, how would you know if a person indeed has a good mental wellness? If you consult the experts on this topic, mental wellness, such as mentalhealth.gov and the American Psychological Association, they give us two criteria for us to look for para malaman mo if a person is mentally well or not. As I discuss these two criteria, I want you to be honest with yourself. Uh, determine if you meet these two criteria. The first one is, you should have an overall feeling of positivity towards yourself and other people. In other words, you need to be feeling good. In a more technical term in psychology, yung feel good, ibig sabihin yan, in terms of your emotional life, you have a positive affect. Marami kang mga positive emotions na nararanasan in your everyday life. And take note, those positive emotions must be towards yourself and other people. It has to be both. Hindi pwedeng you hate yourself but you like other people or other people like you, you like other people but you hate yourself. It has to be both. And what are some of these positive emotions that you need to be feeling for you to say na meron kang criteria number one? Let's do a simple exercise. I am going to read to you some words that will appear on the right side of your screen. If you see the word and you think that that word is present in your psychological life, I want you to shout, Amen. If you think that word is not in your psychological life, then you can just shut up. Alright? So, let's talk about, uh, let me read number one. Are you a person of faith? Meron ka bang pananampalataya? Can you say that you are a person of faith? Number two, can you say that you are happy overall in life? Masaya ka pa ba sa buhay mo? Number three, ikaw ba ay ganadong tao or you are a person of motivation? Do you still find reasons to wake up every morning and do the things that you need to do? Number four, do you still have dreams and aspirations that you are excited about in the future? In fact, numbers three and four are connected. Because you can see future things, it makes you motivated. Number five, can you say na meron ka pang lakas ng loob to face the troubles or the challenges that you are currently facing? Especially today, during the age of the pandemic, there are a lot of challenges. Meron ka pa bang lakas ng loob harapin yung mga yon? Number six, meron ka bang mga taong minamahal? Do you have set of people to whom you center your affection to? And number seven, in connection to number six, yung mga tao bang mahal mo ay mahal ka. Diba? Love has to be reciprocated. Kapag mahal mo yung mga tao, hindi ka naman nila mahal, it's not good for your mental wellness. Number eight, Ikaw ba ay meron pang kumpiyansa sa sarili or in English, do you have self-confidence? Whenever you do something, are you still confident that you can do that something well? Number nine, ikaw ba ay may pagpapahalaga sa sarili? Do you still give yourself importance? Do you still give yourself value? 
do you still believe that you are a person who deserves to be respected? And last one, number 10, do you apply the same things towards other people? Diba? Naniniwala ka rin ba na yung ibang tao dapat irespeto just like how you are being respected? So, the following list of words that I read are some emotions that you need to constantly feel for you to say that you hit criteria number one. And by the way, ang cut-off dito is 7 over 10, which means you need to be saying Amen 7 times for you to say you hit criteria number one. Kapag 6 times ka lang nag-Amen and below, then we can say, hindi mo na hit yung criteria number one. Now, let's move on to number two. You have an absence of any form of mental disorders. In fact, numbers one and two are connected. Malamang sa malamang, if you hit number one, most of the time you will also hit number two. You will have absence of any form of mental disorders. Like for example, if a psychologist would be observing your everyday thinking, everyday emotions, and everyday behaviors, that psychologist will not find a pattern in you that is found inside the DSM-5. Yung mga hindi familiar sa DSM-5, it's called the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. This is a big book. This is a thick book that we use in psychology to formally diagnose people who have mental illnesses. So kapag nakakitaan ka ng mga behaviors, emotional patterns, thinking patterns that are in the DSM-5, that will confirm to us that you are not doing well in terms of your mental health. Ibig sabihin, merong sakit yung iyong psyche. So, you wouldn't like to be found within the pages of the DSM-5. Alright? So, in summary, these are the criteria to say that a person has a good mental wellness. But let me just add that there is a more sure way or a more scientific way of establishing that you are in good mental wellness. Kasi so far, what we're doing is we are just estimating your current mental wellness in connection to this criteria. But if you really, really want to be sure about your mental wellness and be exact, be objective, establish once and for all that you are doing good in your mental wellness, you can consult a psychologist and that psychologist will give you psychological tests or instruments. There are many psychological tests in the market that are designed to measure a person's overall mental wellness. So if you really want to know kung gaano ba kalakas yung mental wellness mo or yung mental health mo, you can just consult a psychologist and he or she will know which test to give you to estimate more or less your mental wellness. Now, we can no longer talk about the specific tests that measure mental wellness because of time constraints. And also, I'm going to reserve that discussion when we talk about it in psychological measurement. Instead, what we will do today is I'm going to give you some sample items coming from these tests so that you will have an idea what are we looking for or what are we looking at when we want to estimate another person's mental wellness? So most of the time in these tests, the person, the test taker, will be given uh, items that are in the Likert format. And what is a Likert format? Usually it starts with a statement and then your job as a test taker is to determine how much you agree with the statement given these numbers. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 5 the highest, and 1 is the lowest. 1 meaning you don't agree that much with the statement. 5, you very much agree with the statement. Alright? So what are some of these items that we give to test takers? Ready? Number 1. I've been feeling optimistic about the future. In Tagalog, positibo ang pananaw ko sa hinaharap. Number 2. I've been feeling useful. In Tagalog, nararamdaman kong may pakinabang ako. Number three, I've been dealing with problems well. Maayos kong nasusolusyonan ang mga problema ko. Number four, I've been thinking clearly. Malinaw ko akong nakakapag-isip. And number five, last one, I've been feeling close to other people. Or in Tagalog, nararamdaman ko ang aking koneksyon sa ibang tao. So those are the items that we 
ask to people na minimeasure natin ng mental wellness. So, I hope those items further gave you an idea what are we looking for or what are we looking at when we are measuring a person's overall mental wellness. So, you decide based on this um, two criteria of mental wellness, how mentally healthy are you in a scale of 1 to 10? 10 being the highest, 1 being the lowest, are you hitting this criteria? That is something to think about. Alright, so I hope you're learning so far. Now, it's time to talk about what are the specific things that we can do to ourselves to improve our mental wellness so that our mental wellness will not decline and lead to mental illness. We need to be applying psychological habits. Meron tayo mga habits sa dapat araw-araw natin ginagawa to strengthen our overall mental health. So, to put that in a diagram, it looks something like this. Here's your psyche. You, that psyche practices mental habits. And those mental habits will lead us to better mental wellness. Mas mababa yung chance na magkakaroon tayo ng mga psychological disorders because we have good mental wellness. But that starts from faithfully doing those mental habits. Again, I want to emphasize the word habits. Ibig sabihin ng habits, mga araw-araw natin ginagawa. Palagi. Regular. Remember that mental wellness is an everyday thing. It is an everyday concern as you can see here on the slide. I want to emphasize on this because many people have a wrong framework on their mental wellness. They think that their mental wellness must only be uh, must only be addressed if there are already symptoms. ba? May mga ganyan tao eh. Wala naman akong symptoms so hindi ko muna iisipin yung mental wellness ko. In fact, the moment that you begin to be concerned about your mental wellness because you already have symptoms, that is already late. Dapat, ang ginagawa talaga dyan is even if there you have no symptoms, wala pang nangyayari sa'yo, hindi pa nagde-decline yung mental wellness mo, you are already doing certain things that maintain that status of your mental wellness. Okay? Hindi yung reactive tayo. Kung kailan tayo may symptoms, doon tayo kikilos to address our mental wellness. We need to be doing these habits every day, kahit wala pang presence ng symptoms, to keep our mental health healthy. Alright? So, I want to discuss with you three topics, or sorry, three techniques that are scientifically proven to improve your mental wellness. Again, these are all habits, something that you need to be doing consistently every day. The first one is called positive reframing. This is your ability to see the good side in negative situations. Kapag nakakaharap ka o nakaka-experience ka ng mga pangit na pangyayari and you apply positive reframing, you do your best to find the good in the midst of that negative situation. In fact, this involves two steps. Step one, you first acknowledge the bad situation. Wag mong i-deny. Acknowledge na meron nangyaring masama and then you let yourself feel the effect of the negative situation. Hindi naman bawal makafeel. You can feel angry, you can feel sad, you can grieve, but you don't stop there. You proceed to step two when you're ready. Now you begin to search for the good things that may have happened in spite of that bad situation. Totoong nakakalungkot yung nangyari, totoong nakakainis yung nangyari, but in positive reframing, you are training your mind to find something good in the bad situation. Let me give you some examples para mas maintindihan ninyo how positive reframing is applied. And now, the first one is my personal example. No? Just last week, I have a craving for sisig. Alam naman natin na itong food na ito is very unhealthy, but it's very yummy, right? So, I already plan to eat out to this restaurant na masarap talagang mag-serve ng sisig. I won't mention which restaurant. 
So to make the long story short, I went to the restaurant and then ordered for the sisig that I was craving for. And lo and behold, hindi raw available yung sisig na ubusan daw. Now for me, that is a very bad situation. Imagine the disappointment I felt because I was looking forward for many weeks to eat in this restaurant tapos wala pa lang sisig na kinikrave ko. Now, I felt bad and I let myself feel bad. Okay, fine. Walang sisig. I acknowledge the situation. That's step one. And I felt bad. In a way, I got irritated. Pambihira naman. Specialty niyo yung sisig. Bakit wala kayong sisig? Dapat dinadamihan niyo yung supply niyo. So, I felt all those things. But, I didn't stop there. Because if I stayed in step one, I just acknowledged the bad situation and I continue feeling bad about the situation, what happens to my mental wellness? It begins to decline. So, I move on to step two. Now, I began searching for the good things in that situation. What good things ang nangyari dahil wala silang sisig? Dahil hindi ako makakakain ng sisig that day? Well, ang naisip ko, at least I was able to save my body from the dangers of this food. Alam naman kasi natin na unhealthy naman talaga yan. Maalat, cholesterol, uh, mataas ang uric acid niyan, di ba? So, given that idea, it's good na wala rin silang sisig because my body will be spared from the toxicity of this food. In a way, maybe I was able to get a longer life that day because hindi ako nakakain ng isang unhealthy dish. You see? Now, after I realized that, that it's good in a way because it saved my body from unhealthy food. In a way, naging okay yung pakiramdam ko. Hindi na ako nainis. Diba? So, bakit na-save ko yung mental wellness ko in that negative situation? Because I applied positive reframing. Another example would be, eto, hypothetical, nag-brown out. Alam naman natin na ayaw natin nag-brown out because all your distractions will be gone. Hindi ka na makaka-internet, hindi ka na makaka-Facebook, Netflix, Instagram, and your brain does not like that. Because a lot of the brains today in our society are addicted to such entertainments and you cannot have all those entertainments kapag brown out. And nag-brown out nga. So what do you do? Step one, acknowledge the bad situation. Bad trip, brown out. Nagbabayad kami ng maayos sa meral ko pero bakit brown out pa rin? And that's fine. You let yourself feel the emotions. You feel bad, you feel irritated, you feel cheated. That's totally fine. But you don't stop there. Now you move on to step two. Anong maganda ang nangyari dahil nag-brown out? Hanap ka ng maganda. Kaya dahil nag-brown out, what good thing may have happened in spite of this situation? Maybe one good example would be, now you have a time to reflect. Now you have time to talk to God. Now you have time to pray. Now you have time to read that book that you wanted to read for a very long time but because you are so distracted kapag may kuryente, hindi mo nababasa. O ba? Diba? So habang brown out, naging spiritual ka. Now you pray to God, now you talk to Him, now you read your Bible, now you're able to read that book. So naging maganda pa. ba? Diba? Nung nagkaroon ng ilaw, Okay? Ano yung isa pang magandang nangyari? After nung nagkaroon ng ilaw, mas tumalino ka. Mas naggrow ka spiritually. You see? So once you search for those good things in the midst of negative situations, you are already working on your mental wellness. How do we apply positive reframing in or during the pandemic? Alam naman natin na ang pandemic is one of the one of the events talaga yan, no? Na we can say very negative, right? Wait lang ha. Alright? Uh, sorry, sorry. There you go. The pandemic is a very negative situation. So if you apply positive reframing, what do you do? You search for the good in the midst of the pandemic. Now, I read a, an, an item in from Facebook about this. Merong isang writer na hinanapan niya ng mga magagandang bagay yung nangyari during the pandemic. So, this is not my own. No? Credit to the owner of this post. Let me read to you the post. It says, 
Iba ka talaga, COVID-19. Ang dami mong binago sa isang iglap. Binuo mo yung pamilya na minsan lang kumain sa pagkainan ng sama-sama. Napapirmi mo ng bahay ang mga anak na sakit ng ulo ng kanilang mga magulang sa sobrang layas at gala. Natutong uminom ng kalamansi juice o anumang fruit juice ang mga mahilig sa soft drinks para lumakas ang kanilang immune system. Napadalas ang kumustahan ng mga magkakamag-anak, pati na ang mga magkakaibigan, kahit na bawal ang halik o beso-beso, malayo man o malapit. Mga may bisyo ng alak, sugal, sigarilyo at droga ay parang napigilan mong gawin nila. Pinakilala mo din sa amin kung sino ang mga taong may pusong tumulong at hindi mapagsamantala. Isama na ang mga namumuliti ka pa kesa makiisa sa pagtulong para mapuksa ka. Sa pamamagitan ng global lockdown, unti-unting nahil si Mother Earth dahil nabawasan ang air pollution kasi wala nang bumiyabiyahing smoke belting vehicles at temporarily closed factories and other businesses. Dahil din sa lockdown, nasolusyonan na ang matagal ng problema na traffic sa EDSA, pati ang telesering ang probinsyano ay tinapos mo na. Ang daming napipilitang maglakad kasi walang pampublikong, pampublikong sasakyan, and this is good because 10,000 steps a day is good for the body. Not to mention, inagdag ko lang dito, marami na rin nagbisikleta, because of this pandemic, which is again good for our overall cardiovascular health. Ang gustong gusto kong ginawa mo ay madami kang tinakot para makarealize paano pahalagahan ang kalusugan. Madami na gustong kumain ng gulay at prutas. At higit sa lahat, ang dami mong pinaluhod para manalangin sa Panginoong Diyos na lumikha kasi madami nang nakakalimot at pinaalala sa amin na indeed God is in control of all things. COVID-19 kahit nakakatakot ka, kahit bad ka sa katawan ng tao, totoo pala, I see the good in the bad. Kapag dininig na ng Diyos ang dasal namin na alisin ka na, sana wag mo isama ang pag-alis mo sa mga magagandang epektong dala mo sa buhay namin. So that's what you mean by positive reframing. In-acknowledge natin na merong COVID-19, it's a very dangerous situation. Many people are suffering, many people have died because of this, but we don't stay there. We reframe. Aayusin natin yung frame. From negative frame, gawin natin positive frame. Ano yung mga magagandang nangyari in spite of COVID-19. Now, I just want to share with you how amazed I was when I discovered that Positive reframing is not a modern-day invention of modern-day psychology. Alam nyo ba, even before psychology, thousands of years before scientific psychology, ang positive reframing, tinuturo na yan in the pages of the Bible. Like for example, in the book of James chapter 1 verses 2 to 3, consider it pure joy. See? Sinasabihan ng mga readers dito na mag-reframe. I-consider nyo na masaya kapag ano, when you face trials of many kinds. Pag may mga trials, hanapin mo yung positive dun sa trials na yon Consider it pure joy. Why? What good things will happen if you have trials? You know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. That word, perseverance, yun pala yung maganda. Yun yung magandang pang-reframe natin sa mga problema. That whenever we face problems, we need to consider it pure joy because this is an opportunity for us to be better people in terms of having a stronger perseverance. Now, that's positive reframing. And that's not even scientific, but that's very biblical. Diba? It is a spiritual activity that is being prescribed to us by the Bible before scientific psychology. So, one mental exercise that I want you to do is, again, apply positive reframing. Ano ang mga magagandang bagay ang nangyari o nangyayari sa buhay mo dala ng isang negative event? Select a negative event in your life that you have underwent before or you are undergoing right now and then fill in the blanks as much as possible as yourself. What good things happened 
because of these negative situations. Again, what do you call that? You call that positive reframing. The second psychological habit that will improve your mental wellness is called gratitude, which means the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for, and to return kindness. I just want you to focus on the word appreciate, which is a psychological skill. Dapat practicein mo yung ability mo to appreciate things or in Tagalog nagiging mapagpasalamat kang tao. There are two steps how to improve or how to enhance your ability to appreciate. Step one, you start with identifying the good things that you currently have. Or in our language, ito yung mga blessings mo. Humanap ka ng mga current blessings mo na meron ka, especially the small ones. Because it is the small blessings that we often take for granted. And then after that, you proceed to step two. Now it's time for you to magnify those small blessings that you have. Yung mga maliliit na blessings na meron ka, palakihin mo. Tignan mo, isipin mo yung value ng mga maliliit na bagay na yon in your everyday life. The Apostle Paul in the Bible taught us that skill. Eh. Sinabi ni Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy, For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those two examples, food and clothing, are good examples of small blessings that we often take for granted. But if you're going to magnify food and clothing, can you imagine how much your life is better with food and clothing? Isipin mo, tanggalin mo yung food and clothing. Simula bukas, wala ka ng kakainin. Simula bukas, wala ka ng matinong isosoot. It will change the overall quality of your life, right? So mukang maliit lang yung food and clothing, but if you think about it, this is foundational in our life. It makes our life so much better because of these small blessings that we have. So to be grateful simply means to focus on what we have. Yen lang naman yung tinuturo ng gratitude. Yen lang naman yung tinuturo ng Bible. No, we need to be grateful on what we have. Now, in connection to gratitude, there is this very interesting study about Instagram which tells us, or the data is telling us, that there are a lot of people suffering from poor mental wellness when they use Instagram for very long time. And the big question now is why? Anong meron sa Instagram that it becomes a risk factor to the overall mental wellness of people who are using it? If you think about the dynamics of Instagram and you connect that to gratitude, it will make sense because Instagram is designed to shape your mind to focus on the things that you don't have but other people have. Like for example, maghapong kang browse ng browse sa Instagram and then you are ingesting, you are internalizing the posts of your idols. You follow them. And most of these idols have more resources than you. They are more capable than you. So there is a possibility, a big possibility, that they will have things that you don't have. That all their things are always better than you. So from there, imagine, araw-araw you are bombarding your mind with these things that you don't have, but they have. You are bombarding yourself with things that are very expensive, that they have, and compared to your things that you currently have, parang nawawalan ng value. So that's the dynamics of Instagram. So if you keep on exposing, if you keep on, or if you if you always let Instagram do this to your mind, it's very understandable why your mental wellness will decline. So to put that in a diagram, it looks something like this. Gamit ka ng gamit ng Instagram. Ano nagiging epekto niyan? Ayan. You are focused on what you don't have. And the things that you currently have, you no longer see it. Because you are so much focused on those things that other people have. So those things that you have, you ignore. And then, what will happen? The more you experience these things every day, now one day you feel bad. Now you feel envious. 
And did you know that envy, it's not good for our mental wellness? Kaya yung mga taong mga inggitero at inggitera, we can say they have poor mental wellness. Malakas magpababa ng mental wellness kapag meron kang nararamdamang inggit. So as you can see in the diagram, that envy will lead to low mental wellness. In fact, even in the Bible, ah, yung, yung epekto ng envy, we need to take it seriously. Even in the Bible, we are being taught that Uh, it's not good to envy other people that it is even included in the Ten Commandments. No? Oh, wait lang ha, nagmamalfunction yung aking pen. Ayan. In the Ten Commandments, remember, we are being taught not to envy because the Bible knows that envy is the number one, one of the top destroyers of mental wellness. Good news, we can combat envy to protect our mental wellness through gratitude. There is an indirect relationship or inverse relationship between gratitude and envy. The more gratitude you have, the lower your envy becomes and vice versa. Kapag pinapairal mo yung envy sa puso mo, ano nangyayari? Bumababa yung gratitude mo. You can no longer see the small things that you have because you are too much focused on the big things that other people have and that is not good for your mental wellness. Let me read to you a story about gratitude which will demonstrate, again, how gratitude is done. Okay? So, let me read for you this story. Once upon a time, there was a blind boy uh, sat, a blind boy sat on the steps of building with a hat by his feet. He held up a sign which read, I am blind, please help. So, yan yung nakasulat para maawa yung mga tao sa kanya at bibigyan siya ng konting pera. There were only a few coins in the hat, spare change from folks as they hurried past. A man was walking by. He took a few coins from his pocket and dropped them into the hat. So, nagbigay din siya doon sa blind boy. But after doing this, he did something else. What did he do? He then took the sign, turned it around, and wrote some words. May sinulat siya. Then he put the sign back in the boy's hand so that everyone who walked by would see the new words. And then what happened? Soon the hat began to fill up. Dumami yung nagbigay doon sa blind boy. A lot more people were giving money to the blind boy. That afternoon, the man was who had changed the sign returned to see how things were. Then the boy recognized it through his footsteps and asked, Were you the one who changed my sign this morning? What did you write? Kasi takang-taka yung blind boy. Ano kaya yung nilagay niya doon sa signboard ko? At nung nilagay niya yon, ang dami nang nagbigay sa kanya. And so when he asked the guy, the man said, I only wrote the truth. I said what you said, but in a different way. Let's review. Ano ba sinabi ng blind boy kanina? I am blind, please help. So this guy paraphrased those words into, ano yung sinulat niya? Today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see it. And these are the words that motivated people to give more to the boy. Both signs spoke the truth, but the first sign simply said the boy was blind, while the second sign conveyed to everyone walking by how grateful they should be to see. Did you get that? Because they were able to read these words, anong naging epekto sa kanila? Practice empathy. Put yourself into a person who sees these words being held by a blind guy or a blind boy. It will make you see your sense of sight. It will make you appreciate your sense of sight. Marirealize mo na ang blessed, blessed mo na ikaw nakikita mo yung ganda ng araw while this guy has no opportunity to see what you are currently seeing. So, ma-activate ngayon yung gratitude ng mga tao who can read these words and that gratitude will spill over to their motivation to give money to the boy. Kung baga, parang ito yung nangyari no, in the story. Okay? Nung nabasa ng mga tao yung sign na yan, they were able to magnify their sight. Buti pa ako nakakakita. Oo nga naman. This guy cannot see, but I can enjoy the beauty of the world because I can see. Na magnify nila yung blessing that they were taking for granted. 
And that led to a positive feeling. I am so blessed. And that positive feeling, it spills over to their behaviors. Now, I want to do something good for this guy. They gave more. And that is good for their mental wellness. Right? That positive feeling, feeling blessed, feeling appreciative of what you have is good for your overall mental wellness. Sabi nga ng isang author, which I very much agree, it is not happy people who are thankful, it is thankful people who are happy. So the lesson here is, if you really want to work on your mental health, keep it strong, you need to be expressing more and more gratitude every day. Let me give to you two mental exercises in connection to gratitude expression. Number one, please train yourself to always find three good things every day that you are thankful for. You can do this before you go to sleep. Before you go to sleep, identify three things that happened to you or three things that you currently have which you are very grateful for. Never go to sleep without doing that. And then mas maganda after you identify those three things that you are grateful for, that you have, samaan mo ng prayer. You talk to God and thank God about those things that you currently have. And by the way, hindi lang ako yung may gawa ng activity na yan. No? Studies after studies have shown that such activity is very effective in enhancing mental wellness. You can read a lot of research papers on this na talagang kapag yung tao, ginagawang habit yan, giving things before going to sleep, mental wellness improves. Number two, another way to express gratitude no? that you can do as an exercise is you try to minimize your complaints and maximize your thanksgiving. In other words, dapat yung listahan mo ng reklamo mas konte, tama ba? Less than, no? Mas konte kumpara sa mga pinagpapasalamat mo. This is the road to a better mental health. The more you are training your awareness to see things that you are thankful for, the better your mental health becomes. Vice versa, one way to really destroy your mental wellness at maya-maya meron ka ng mental illness is damihan mo yung reklamo mo tapos huwag kang magpasalamat. You see the difference? When you have longer list, when you exert more effort finding things that you can be appreciative for, ano eh, mas, mas natatrain yung mind mo to focus on the positive. But the reverse is true. If you train your mind or if you, if you exert effort to identify more complaints, you are training your mind to be very negative. Hinahanapan mo lagi ng problema. Hinahanapan mo lagi ng hindi okay. Kaya nangyayari, you keep on seeing the deficiencies, you keep on seeing the bad things, it declines your overall mental health. So one good example of this would be, let's say, poor internet connection. Of course, all of us will feel bad, di ba? When we experience poor internet connection. But let's apply gratitude. Paano ba ginagamit yung gratitude dito? Alright. Can we complain? Can we complain if there is low internet connection? Definitely. Definitely. That's our right. That's our consumer right. Binigyan mo sila ng pera para mabilis yung internet. You deserve a fast internet. Now, one day, the internet got slow. You deserve to complain. But before you complain, again, hindi ko naman hinihinto na mag-complain kayo, but before you do, you think about your gratitude list. Kasi may ilaman na kaagad yung reklamo list mo eh. ba? Diba? Mabagal yung internet today. Pero, tignan mo muna yung gratitude list mo. ba? Diba? To pacify the intensity of your reklamo list. Question. From the moment that you subscribe to this service provider, everyday ba? Lagi bang mabagal yung internet? As in everyday? Walang araw ang hindi mabagal ang internet? If you are going to be honest and be realistic about this, the answer is no. I'm sure there were good days. I'm sure there were days na mabilis ang internet. Question. During those days na mabilis ang internet connection mo, did you say thank you to the service provider? Di ba may gana kang magreklamo ngayon? Tatawag ka, susulat ka ng letter? Eh yung maganda yung service nila, tumawag ka ba? Nagsulat ka rin ba ng letter? 
Now, some of you may ask me, eh, sir, syempre, hindi namin gagawin yun kasi that's our money's worth. Hindi nila, hindi namin kailangan mag-thank you kasi yun yung bayad namin sa pinangako nilang serbisyo. My answer, I agree. Totoo naman yun. Right? They don't deserve your thank you because that's the money that you paid them. But, when you go the extra mile of saying thank you, even if you need, if you don't need to, that is for your mental health. That is for your mental health. It's good for your mental health to give thanks. Am I making sense? So, hindi bawal magreklamo. Okay? Pero, pag may mga magagandang nangyari, dapat mabilis din tayo magsabi ng thank you. Binabalansi natin. We can complain, but we don't complain all the time. There are times that instead of complaining, we are giving other people gratitude. We count our blessings. Alright? At again, yung counting blessings na yan, hindi lang yung, ako yung nag-invento niyan, studies after studies have shown that this psychological activity of giving things is good for your overall mental wellness. The more you say thank you, the stronger your mental wellness becomes because saying thank you to other people generates positive emotions which is one of the foundations of good mental wellness. Kahit nga sa Biblia eh, kitinuturo na yan. Thousands of years before scientific psychology, anong sinabi sa Biblia? Give thanks in all circumstances. Kahit nasa situation ka na parang wala kang, wala kang dapat ipagpasalamat, you still give thanks. Why does the Bible tell us to do this? Because the Bible knows that giving thanks will generate positive emotions which is good for our overall mental wellness. I hope you're learning so far. Okay, so far, meron na tayo natutunang dalawang techniques on how to improve our overall mental health. Now, we go to the last technique and this is social support. Okay? Actually, among the three, ito yung pinaka-obvious na paraan para lumakas yung ating mental wellness. We need to receive help from other people. Am I right? Receiving help is good for our mental health. It lowers our stress. It strengthens our connection to those people who help us, so on and so forth. Alright? But this is already an overly discussed way to improve on mental wellness. Gusto ko dagdagan. No? Nasa tingin ko, there are a lot of psychologists out there who don't even teach this. But I believe this something is more important than this one. And what is that? It's good to receive help for our mental health wellness, but remember, giving help to other people is more powerful in enhancing our mental health. Sa Tagalog, okay na tumanggap tayo ng tulong from other people, pero mas okay kapag tayo ang nagbibigay ng tulong, nagbibigay suporta to other people. In fact, that's the problem why a lot of people today have poor mental wellness. Eh. They are too much concerned on this. They expect people to help them to do things for them. And if people don't, they get disappointed, their mental wellness suffers. Hindi dapat ganun yung framework natin. Instead of looking for people who will help us, every day it must be our habit to search for people whom we can help. Diba sabi nga sa Biblia, no? from the words of Jesus Christ himself, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Again, that biblical statement is scientifically confirmed. Let me present to you one of the findings that they had in connection to curing depression. Alam naman natin na yung depression, very common. So many psychologists were finding some ways how to cure depression. So, nag sila ng iba't ibang mga medications, iba't ibang mga therapies on how to lessen a person's depression. But one of the one of the most successful findings, surprising findings they had 
about how to cure depression is the finding that one of the ways to really deal with a person's depression is to let depressed people help other people. Can you imagine? You find people who are depressed and you tell them to support other people, help other people, it improves their condition big time. In fact, sabi nga ng isang study, no? Those depressed people who are asked to help other people in need, yung effect sa kanilang depression is as good as taking an antidepressant. Except that they did not take antidepressant. They just help other people. Now, don't get me wrong, ha? Hindi ko sinasabing hindi na mahalaga yung antidepressant. I am just emphasizing how powerful it is when we help other people in need. Gumaganda rin yung ating overall psychological well-being because we are designed that way. Our psyche naturally feels good when we know that we are able to do something good towards another person. And again, you know, this finding, this scientific finding is echoed thousands of years before scientific psychology within the pages of the Bible. So, anong Bible passage yung pwede nating mabasa that will show to us that helping others will contribute big time to our psychological wellness? Let me read to you Isaiah 58 verse 10. If you put yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, by the way, who is talking here? God himself is talking here the maker of the psyche, the maker of psychology, the great psychologist is the one speaking here. What does he say? If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. I believe symbolic itong light na to at saka yung darkness na yan. The passage is talking about our psychological moods that our moods big time will have a big time improvement when we give support to other people how do we know it's true because it's what the maker of the psyche tells us Shana gumawa ng psyche natin eh. he designed it to be that way that we generate positive feelings within us if we are able to support another human being in need. So, how does supporting others contribute to mental health? If I'm going to put that in a diagram, it looks something like this. You start by supporting others. What happens? According to the literature, now, there is shift of awareness. Imagine you're depressed. Did you know that one of the reasons why a person is depressed? Too much self-focus. So, if you want to handle depression better, one way to do it is you lessen the self-focus of the depressed person. Bawasan mo yung pag-focus niya sa sarili niya kasi feeling niya siya yung pinakakuwawang tao sa buong mundo. That's the challenge among psychologists. How would you transfer that kind of awareness of a depressed person to improve the condition? Palitan mo yung shift of focus. From too much self-focus, help that person focus their aware awareness to other people. And how do you do that? You let them serve other people. And when they do, when they serve other people, two things happen when they shift their awareness. Number one, they realize na hindi lang pala sila yung may problema sa mundo. And that idea is already a big help to improve their overall mental wellness. Ha? Yung ma-realize lang nila na may ibang tao din palang may problema, hindi lang sila. So, nasa sense nila na meron palang sense of fellowship dito. Na hindi lang ako yung nag undergo ng something. Marami kami. That is already a big contribution to improve the mental wellness of the depressed person. And second, depressed people who serve others realize that there are people out there who's got bigger problems than their current problem. And again, it is a very, that, that in itself is a very big help to lessen the intensity of their depression. In fact, yung ibang taong depressed nga, nahihiya pa sa sarili nila eh. Grabe naman. 
ito yung pinoproblema ko, eh, ito palang tinutulungan ko, mas grabe pa yung problema sa akin. When that realization kicks in to our psyche, especially of the depressed people, the intensity of the depression goes down. That is why, what can we learn from all, from all these studies? One way or one reason why you have poor mental wellness, it's because of selfishness. Too much self focus. Masyado kang nakafocus sa problema mo. Masyado kang focus sa mga nangyari sa yung ma- masasama. So what do you do? You get rid of that selfishness to improve your mental wellness. The Bible even confirms that, ha? di ba? Kapag masyadong mataas ang selfishness level ng tao, nagkakaroon tayo ng disorders. Nawawala yung anti-mental wellness. Again, we go back to the book of James. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, Remember, envy is also a form of selfishness. There you find disorder and every evil practice. I believe that the word disorder here includes mental disorder. Ang sinasabi ng passage dito, if you are focused too much on yourself, it's not good for your mental health. So how do you do this? Ano ang antidote dito sa selfishness? Selflessness. And the best way to show selflessness is to serve other people. This is the antidote for envy. Okay? I think, no, as a, as a psychology professional, this is one of the reasons why there are many young people today who are very depressed. Because in our society today, especially among these age groups, dito talaga pinakamataas ang value of selfishness eh. Especially in our society today, social media age, digital age, we are being trained to promote ourselves, to sell ourselves online. That's why a lot of people are doing lots of things, sometimes even stupid things in the internet just for them to be accepted. Just for them to be noticed, which is not good. That is not good for our mental wellness. The more we focus on ourselves, the more our mental wellness declines. Even Time Magazine, in connection to this line graph, no, uh, nakita rin nila to sa mga kabataan ngayon that they wrote an entire issue on this. How selfish the generation is today. Of course, not all people are, but it seems like ito na kasi yung norm sa society natin ngayon where people are so much concerned especially the young people so much concerned about the me the self and this is bad news again the more you focus on yourself the more you increase your selfishness level according to James there will be disorder there will be evil practice alright actually Here's a lie that a lot of young people believe today. The more you serve yourself, the more you become happy. That's the first step to overcome this. Destroy this. This is not true. Whoever said these words definitely does not know psychology. The more you serve yourself, the more you become ha- you become happy. No. The more you focus on yourself, the more you serve yourself, the more you are bringing disorder into your mental wellness. Because when we talk about the psychological dynamics of creatures like us, human beings, it's the reverse. eh? We are designed by God not to serve ourselves, but to serve other people. That's one of the spiritual laws that everyone should really apply in their everyday life if you want to improve your mental wellness. The soul does not grow by addition but by subtraction. The measure of a man is not how many servants he has but how many men he serves. So in closing, dito sa third psychological technique to make your mental health uh, better is every day you wake up in the morning, this must be one of the first questions that you ask. Who can I serve today? Who can I serve today? Don't look for people who will serve you. Don't look for people who will make you happy. Rather, you look for people that you can give to. You look for people that you can serve. Just like what Christ did. Why do you think Christ washed his disciples' feet? 
Wala lang, trip lang niya. No. To set an example. To teach us how our psyche functions. That our psyche becomes better when we let ourselves become of service to other people. And what are some of the ways? Mabibilis lang naman yun eh. Any form of help will do. Financial, attention, care, time, understanding, encouragement, love, and other ways on how you can serve other people, serve and serve and serve. It's good for your mental wellness. Alright, so in summary, before we end this lesson, ano yung natutunan natin ngayon? How to improve your mental wellness. What do you need to improve your mental wellness? Psychological habits that you do every day. What are the three habits that you do every day? Positive reframing, gratitude, and giving social support. All of these habits will lead to better mental wellness. It will enable you to improve your condition. Kung meron ka ng mental illness, mababawasan yung intensity ng, ng, ng illness mo. And these habits will help you protect or will help you prevent the decline of your mental wellness. Okay? So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask it. Thank you for listening, everyone. Have a great day. God bless. Bye-bye.